we're, we're excited about this, this ser sharing this service with you. Uh, I'll have Gina here with me in just a moment. We're going uh, to share a, a, a devotional word today. Uh, but I, I'm also excited because uh, some of you have been asking uh, for some music. And so uh, we've invited a special guest to come and lead us in a couple of songs. So I'm going to invite uh, Sarah Pike onto the stage, and she's going to do that. Thank you, Sarah. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. She'll be back uh, at the end of this service uh, uh, to share another song with us in worship. Hope that you're joining her in singing that song uh, so that she doesn't feel like she's doing a solo every time. So. <laughs> you know, we've been reflecting on the wonder of who Jesus is. He is our intercessor, our forgiver, our provider, our king. Now on this Good Friday, we are looking at Jesus our Redeemer. Truth. You cannot deal with your own sins. I, that's a harsh truth to begin the service with, okay? But but uh, we deal in truth here, okay? So you cannot deal with your own sins. The problem is our spiritual debt, and, and that's expressed even in the most basic prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. In Matthew 6, verse 12, it says, right in the middle of the prayer, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Here's another truth. This is why Jesus came. Jesus came.
to cancel your debt, my debt. John 1, 29 says this, the next day he, talking about John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So first, there's bad news. We have a debt that we can't pay. This is our shared story. Before Christ, we're hopeless. Unable to satisfy our spiritual debt. We're helplessly trapped by the curse of sin. Orphaned by our rebellion against God. And the Bible says, dead in our sin. So let's talk about this debt that we can't pay off. There's a sign in New York City. It's uh, 25 feet wide. It weighs 1,500 pounds. And it uses over 300 light bulbs to constantly mercilessly, endlessly declare the U.S. debt and each family share. The original debt clock wasn't built uh, to run backward, but it's rarely, if ever, had to do that. There's been talk, though, about installing an updated model of the debt clock that can display into the quadrillion of dollars. So what if, here's a question, what if Heaven had a debt clock, a marquee that measured not our fiscal debt, but our spiritual one. Scripture often refers to sin in financial terminology. As Pastor read a moment ago, Jesus taught us to pray, forgive us our debts. So if sin is a debt, do you and I have a digital trespass counter in heaven? Does it click? At each infraction, we lie. Click. We gossip. Click. We demand our way. Click, click, click. We doze off during church. Click, 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 and click. All right, so consider this. What, what if, well, let me put it this way. We have never not sinned. Look at it on the, look at it on the screen. We have never not sinned. Have you ever lived a sinless hour? Think about it, 60 minutes without a single sin. Okay, how about only one sin? Uh, me either, but, but let's say you did. Let's say that you live a life where you average only one sin for every hour. Whew. All right, so let's consider this. Let's, let's do some math. Not necessarily my favorite subject, but let's try it today. So let's think, sinning one time in one hour in an average lifespan of 72 years would mean the accumulation of 630,720 cents. But I tell you what, today you get a discount. Oh, nice. Yes. That's very charitable of you. Yes, it's that's, almost, that's uh, like I grace. Think, I know, right? Grace. It says it's Good Friday and they're taking their time. Good Friday grace right here. Yes, and you're taking your time to join us today. You get a discount. I mean, that's got to count for something. So let's let's round that down to, oh, 600,000 okay, cents so in let, a lifespan. 600,000. That's a deal. Okay? That's a deal. But let's imagine standing before the throne of a sinless wow. and perfect God. And heaven is a perfect place. Yeah. Okay? And you? You would be perfect if it weren't for the 600,000 failures that are on your record. Wow. And if this was accounting, you would be so far in debt that the books would just be stained red. 600,000 sins separate you and God. Wow. That debt is impossible. That distance is insurmountable. That's why this is bad news. We are sinners in debt to a holy God. What can we do? Well, that, that's a good question. What can we do? But more importantly, a, a much better question is, what did God do? What did God do? And that's where the good news comes in. I... I, I strategized here. Gina got to deal with the bad news. I get to deal with the good news. Oh, we're going to share the good news, all right? And here's the good news. Jesus completely paid our debt. Amen. I like the way Peter writes it in 1 Peter chapter 1. He says this in verse 18 and 19, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed 
from the old way or the empty way of life, mm -hmm. but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. That's how, that's how our debt was paid. Uh, Jesus redeemed us. He paid our debt with his blood. Hebrews 9, 22 says this, According to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Our debt cannot be forgiven without Jesus' perfect sacrifice. God so loved that he sent a redeemer to pay our debt. And that's the definition of redemption, to buy back to clear a debt. And Peter tells us that God took the most precious treasure of heaven to pay off our debt. It was the blood of Jesus that makes forgiveness possible. And silver and gold pale in comparison to that value. So I wish somebody would pay off our debt, oh, you know, yeah, our, 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 our financial debt. Yes. But listen, the, the fact of the matter is uh, that we have a much greater debt yes. and it's the debt of our sin yes. and the good news is that Jesus our Redeemer bought yes. us back Amen. he paid our debt he cleared our debt so and we know this because the Bible tells us that there are because of his one sacrifice there are there is no more sacrifices for sins once and for all Jesus died he redeemed Amen. Once and for all. No Amen. more deposits on the debt of sin. Jesus' payment was as complete on the cross as, as could be. Right. And in fact, Jesus used a banking term uh, to proclaim our salvation. On the cross, Jesus used a banking term. And, and, and here it is on the screen. It's Greek. Tetelestai. We, we translate it as it is finished. In John 19, 30, as Jesus is on the cross, he cries out, Tetelestai, it is finished. That's a financial term that was used to announce the final and ultimate payment of a debt. Amen. And you know, the, the words of an old chorus still rings true today. I remember singing this at church, and I, I, this is a great song. Listen to these words. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Amen. That's great. And since that debt is paid, no more sacrifice needed. No more deposits necessary. All that is left is for us to come near to God. And I, that's why I like Isaiah's promise to Israel. Uh, it, God makes this promise through the prophet Isaiah. This is in Isaiah 1.18. And listen to it. Listen to what God says. Come now, let's settle this. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Oh, God, think about it. Though they're red like crimson, God says, I will make them as white as wool. So you might have some questions uh, as we share bad news and better news, good news. You might have some questions, but there's really only one important question to be answered today. And I want to ask it. Okay. Okay. Here it is. Since Jesus paid your sin debt, what are you waiting for? Since Jesus paid your sin debt, what are you waiting for? That's a good question. Maybe you're in denial about your sin. Uh, 1 John 1 verse 8 says this, if we claim that we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. Right. And verse 10 says, if we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. So in denial, yes. okay? But maybe you're thinking, at least I'm not that bad. That's true. true. Okay? okay? You're trying to, in other words, you're trying to justify your sin by comparing your life to really bad people. Mm -hmm. I'm not as bad as them. Right, right. So, I, so, you know, surely God wouldn't, surely God wouldn't judge me like he does them. Okay, 
Listen, here's the problem with comparison, all right? And I just want you to get this. You still got a debt right. that you can't pay. That's right. Romans 3.23, Paul writes this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This is such an important scripture. He says, for everyone has sinned. Everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. But pastor, I've done too much. I've gone too far. Surely God wouldn't forgive all the debt that I've accumulated. So, so listen, here it is. You could be in denial about your sin, yeah. or you could, you could be drawing comparisons or you might be the person that says, I've gone too far. Well, the answer to that is, once again, truth. Okay? And the truth is, listen to this. I, first of all, Romans 5.20. Mm -hmm. Where sin abounds, grace there much more abounds. Amen. Isn't Amen. that good news? That is good news. And then Romans 6.23, Paul says, for the wages of sin is death. Bad news. That is bad. Okay? Here's the good news. And it's prefaced with that, here's that, uh, that yeah. word, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Wait, did you get that? The free gift of God. Say that with me. The free, free gift, gift of, of God. God. It's not something you have to earn or, it, or work for. But, well, wait, hang on. It can't be that easy. All right. It, it, Surely, I've got to make up for the bad. I've got to do some penance. There, there's something that I have to do, uh, some kind of restitution to offset my, you know, my, my sinful life. Well, I think we all know a, a verse, John 3, 16. Uh, it says this, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Wait, so believe, believe, how do you say that? Everyone who believes, believes in, in him, him will not perish, but have eternal, eternal life. life. So believe. So, but that's, that's too easy. That, you know, I, I mean, I want to do something more than just believe. And so I, I know it's got to, we got to do something harder than that, right? Why do we, why do we complicate it? And I'll tell you this, religion complicates it. Yes. Yes. Religion, but not God. God does not complicate this. We don't have to do penance. We don't have to do restitution. We just need to believe. Can I show it to you one, in one other passage in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10? If you, he said, Paul writes, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will Amen. be saved. Amen. For it's by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it's by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Wow, you know, a few moments ago, I read from 1 John chapter 1, and, and right, I read verse 8 and I read verse 10, but right in the middle of that, uh, we read about, about how God has an answer for it. You know, we, we talked about verse 8, how people deny their sin, or, they, or when we do, we call God a liar. But verse 9 says, it tells us what to do. If we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins Praise and God. to cleanse us from all wickedness. So, so will you accept Christ's payment for your debt of sin? Will you trust God to forgive your sin? If that's your sincere desire, then with all your heart, will you say this prayer with us? Why don't you repeat after me? Gina's going to lead you. I'll, I'll lead and then Gina will follow yes. and pray with Gina. Uh, and, and pray this from your heart, okay? Let's do that. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I'm sorry for all that I've done wrong. I'm sorry for all that I've done wrong. I believe that you died to pay the debt for my sins. I believe that you died to pay the debt of my sin. I admit my sinfulness. I admit my sinfulness. And I accept your offer of forgiveness. And I accept your offer of forgiveness. I know this is the only way that I can ever be forgiven. I know this is the only way I can ever be forgiven. And you've made that possible by dying for me on the cross. And you've made that possible for dying for me on the cross. I believe that you're alive today. I believe that you are alive today. And I need your gift of eternal life. And I need your gift of eternal life. Thank you for making it possible for me to be forgiven. 
Thank you for making it possible for me to be forgiven. And to be made right with God. And to be made right with God. And thank you for the gift of eternal life. And thank you for the gift of eternal life. Amen. So what's next? What's next? Having our debt paid is something to celebrate. And that's what communion is all about. So I, when Jesus in that last supper was with his disciples, and they were gathered in the upper room, he broke bread and he passed a common cup. Yes. And he said, whenever you do this, Okay, you proclaim the Lord's death. He says, you do this in remembrance of me. So today, as you, as you hold the cup and as you hold the, the little wafer of the cracker, and as we receive that, we're, we're remembering what Christ has done for us. Okay? We're celebrating what Christ has done for us. Now, if, if, you're not, if you haven't believed in, in what Jesus has done for us, then, then this is meaningless. It's just, a, it's just going through the motions. But that's not true for you. If, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it from Amen. your heart, this right. is, we're going to celebrate Amen. through the cup and through the bread uh, what Jesus has done for us. So, so this morning, take your cup and, and take the bread and let's receive together. We're going to pray over each of these, uh, of these symbols. That's all they are, symbols. Jesus said that the bread is is his body broken for us. So will you just join me in thanking him for, for what he endured on the cross? Jesus. As I say so many times here at Calvary, not just for us, but because of us. Amen. Jesus, you were sinless. The Bible tells Amen. us that, that you knew no sin, but you became sin for us. Jesus, you took on all our sin I, and, and you bore the penalty of our sin on your body. Thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to do that for me. And today, while my heart is, is heavy at, at, at the knowledge that you've done this, God, my, my spirit is lifted because I know that you have, because of your sacrifice, my sins are forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, that I don't have to endure the penalty, but that you did it for me. And Jesus, today I eat and this bread in remembrance of you. Let's eat together. The Bible says that in the same way that he prayed and blessed the bread, he prayed and blessed over the cup. And he said to the disciples, this cup is the, represents a new covenant uh, of my blood for you. So, the, a new covenant, a new relationship with God because of Jesus' sacrifice. So even as Jesus refused uh, to, to pass on the cup, now he prayed in the garden, that human part of Jesus, yes. if, it by, if it be thy will, Father, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. When Jesus prayed that prayer, he did not pass on the cup. And as I've said, again, so many times here at Calvary, we say the cup was bitter for Jesus, but it's sweet for us. So if you're grateful for his sacrifice and for the new forever covenant relationship that we have with the Father because of Jesus, let's pray over it. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you again for your sacrifice. And we thank you that this cup represents your blood shed for us. We thank you that you were willing to do this for us, Jesus, and that, and that you make a forever relationship with God possible, that I can be a child of God. Thank you for that, Jesus. It's because of your sacrifice, and I'm grateful for it. And I drink today in remembrance of you. Let's do that. Amen. That's a celebration, friends. Amen. That's what Good yes. Friday is all about. I'm going to ask Sarah to come if she would, and she's going to lead us in a song. Uh, it's actually the theme uh, of this Easter series that we started back yeah. in the middle of March yeah. called No Wonder. So today we've been talking No Wonder yes. that Jesus is our Redeemer. Redeemer. So Amen. we're going to sing that chorus together, okay? Join, join Sarah as, as she leads us in that.
So what now? If you just asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins today, if you've put your faith in his once and for all sacrifice, we encourage you to continue this new life by spending time in God's word by prayer and through prayer. Read the promises of his word. And we have resources available to help you do that. Just let us know and we'll get them to you. One more thing. If you've asked Jesus to forgive your sin, your debt is paid. Amen. Yes. Okay? Yes. If you've decided to trust Jesus today, okay, let us know. Yes. You can go to our website, uh, www.calvaryconnects.com. You can uh, message us from there. Yes. Okay? But listen, more importantly than letting us know, let others know, Amen. especially yes. those who are living under the crushing debt of sin. Let them know what Jesus has done for them. Amen. Yes. Thank you guys for joining yes. us for this special Thank Good you. Friday live stream. It's Amen. been fun to do this with Gina and, and to have Sarah here as well. Uh, we, want, we want you to be a part of our Easter live yes. stream celebration yes. on Sunday. Okay? We're, we're going to be at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yep. We're going to be yep. starting. And I think we might be able to coerce uh, Sarah to come back. And uh, <laughs> uh, she's going to lead worship again, perhaps. And we might have a couple other special yeah, guests as yeah, well. That's true. So uh, 
Listen, thanks for being here. There's a little video that we're going to go out with today. Uh, so this is, this is our, our goodbye moment. But uh, I want you to watch this video. I think you'll appreciate it. Uh, and uh, join us Sunday morning, 10 o'clock in the morning. And we're going to celebrate Easter together in this way. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. And remember, remember, uh, even though we're not having church, you are That's the right. church. That's right. Okay? God bless you guys. No other king could vanquish the war horse or silence the warrior's rage while riding the lowly back of a donkey. No other king could break the dominion of darkness, the tyranny of evil, with a reign of grace and a kingdom of peace. No other king could give his life for the redemption of rebels, his wealth to welcome the outcast. Is that king, the king of glory, son of the living God, not just another king, not just another prophet, not just another teacher. He was the one the world had been waiting for, the one to deliver us from captivity, the son of David and Abraham's chosen seed. He is the goal of the Mosaic law, Yahweh in the flesh. He is the one to establish God's reign and rule, to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, freedom to the prisoners, and proclaim good news to the poor. This Jesus was the creator come to earth and the beginning of a new creation. He embodied the covenant, fulfilled the commandments, and reversed the curse. This Jesus is the Christ that God spoke of to the serpent, the one prefigured to Noah in the flood, the one promised to Abraham, the one guaranteed to Moses before he died, the one promised to David during his reign, the one revealed to Isaiah as a suffering servant, the one predicted through the prophets and prepared for through John the Baptist. He is the Father's Son, Savior of the world, and substitute for our sins. More loving, more holy, and more wonderfully terrifying than we 